Welcome everybody to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, today I I I love. I will say I've been really enjoying the WNBA the past couple of years, and I mean like just seeing the energy, seeing the rise, seeing the overdue like attention and energy. I, I'm just loving it so much, and uh, this is a really special episode. I'm really, I love to be able to talk to the athletes, the people who are out there showcasing their skills, how talented they are, just making things happen, and just get finally really like getting that shine they deserve. Um, and this is somebody who is a two time champion. She is an elite point guard and she's a pure point guard. So if you know a pure point guard means you mean in every sense of the word, she can get it done, whether it be assisting, putting up back baskets, she can do it. All that to say, Atlanta Dreams, Jordan Canada, how are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I, I want to go ahead and get to it. Um, I think I want to start off. I don't want to go too far back, but I think it's very important to sometimes acknowledge the key moments of the past that really Sorry, like. Sorry, that was my coach. He didn't realize I'm on a Zoom call. He just <laughs> put the peace sign in front of the, the camera. Sorry about that. <laughs> nah, you're all good. You're all good. Um, I'll, so I want to I want to go back a little bit. You know, uh, you're you're from California. You went to UCLA. Um, I would love to know. I think. <laughs> I don't think it's when your career, and I'm going to get to it, your career, a lot happened in the beginning. It was a lot. Um, but I would love to kind of just know when you kind of reflect to those to those days, of your college career, um, what was kind of something that like, what was the most valuable thing that you learned from your time at UCLA that like truly prepared for you to be not just like a player on the court in WNBA, but also just like handling that lifestyle off the court too? Yeah, um, I think the biggest lesson that I learned actually um, was I don't even want to say it's basketball related, really. So um, during my college time, we had these journals that we had to write in every single day after practice. Our coach made us. Um, and on the top of the uh, on the top of the paper, we had to write my value comes from who I am, not from what I do. Mm. And then we had to list. 15 things that we did well throughout the day it could be in practice it could be before practice um after practice um and I took that that quote my value comes from who I am not from what I do like to heart because I really think you know that matters especially as an athlete we tend to um think of our worth based on like how we perform as an athlete or how good we are and you know it's at the end of the day, like basketball is just a game. It's what I do. It's not who I am. Um, the things that I uh, value most in life um, have nothing to do with basketball, you know? Um, and I think that's a message that really that I took and have carried with me throughout my career is that how do I, um, how do I want to be valued? Um, not just as a basketball player, but off the court, the things that I do, the people that I love, um, the morals that I have, um, the integrity that I have, uh, how I carry myself, those are the things that are most valuable. And that's who I am as a person. Um, so that's probably the biggest lesson that I learned in college and continue to repeat with me to this day. I love that. And there's so much value in what you just said there. I think Even from a sense of a non-athlete, like a non-athlete perspective, I think even a lot of people will, from day to day struggle with finding their identity or finding who they are, their value in their jobs, mm -hmm. uh, rather be at the desk or wherever they're at. And so I think it's even really good. What what an amazing job to have something that special reflect because that also affects you on the court because you now you like okay. you're not you're 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 thinking about your performance in a way that is progressive and working in your favor instead of like. If tonight's performance is bad, I'm a trash. I'm I'm, I'm trash. I'm no good. Blah, blah, blah. Like it, it just like negates any kind of negative self talk that could even like grow. So I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And from somebody who's had that personal experience, like before I got to college, you know, again, like I used to tend to think of, you know, if I had a bad game, that you know, people, my my family would be disappointed, or my friends mm -hmm. would be disappointed, coaches be disappointed, and you know, they will value me as just like a basketball player. And if I wasn't good enough, you know, then I was good to no one. So I really had to like, really put that in my brain like day after day. And that was something that she instilled in us is just constantly writing that on a piece of paper, because then you start to really believe that and value that. And 
you know, as I did that over the course of my four years, I mean, obviously now, like I said, I still take that with me. And, you know, basketball at the end of the day is, is just a game. Um, there's way more things important in life and what I value that's way more important. Um, of course, I love basketball. I don't want to just say that basketball is not important. But, um, you know, it's compared to what's going on in the world and in and, and my life, like that is just such a small thing. And so, um, yeah, I just try to take that with me, you know, wherever I go. And though I think though in, in the bigger scheme of things in life is a smaller thing, but I, I must say the things that you have accomplished are amazing. And I kind of want to get to that because you get drafted uh, fifth overall to Seattle uh, I mean, literally life happens so fast in your rookie year. Then you win your first WNBA championship that first year, I think 2018. Um, I think it's so much to take in, right? Like I'm pretty sure you weren't even, you probably didn't even have the space to reflect um, on what was happening in all those moments. Um, even within that time, probably happened later on or whatever, we could find a moment. How how did it really feel to like receive that amount of success earlier on? Um, but then at the same time, knowing like, hey, like I'm having a great team. This is a great team. But also like, let me explain it this way. To see that much success, but also want to grow as a player individually. What was that kind of duality like? I can only imagine in your rookie season, like, you know, yes, like we won. That's awesome. We have a great team. But there's things that I want to do better. It's my first year. I can be better. I can like how how is it balancing those two things? Man, my rookie year was crazy. I did not expect to win a championship in my first season. Um, and at the time, you know, there's growing pains when you get into the league as a rookie, especially as a point guard. Um, just having to find my way, you know, coming from UCLA where I played for all, four years as a starter. And then coming into a well-talented team, um, playing behind, you know, the one of the greats, if not the greatest, to ever play the game in Sue Bird, um, having to find my role. That was kind of like the hardest adjustment for me is how do I fit into this team who has who was already talented enough and how do I bring my strengths to the team? Um, so that was a hard balance to figure out what my new role was and I feel like I did a pretty good job um, considering, you know, I feel like I contributed to to winning um, that championship in 2018. And honestly, I didn't even really have time to really reflect on winning because literally a week later I went to Poland and played overseas. So mm -hmm. it was kind of like everything was happening so fast. I didn't get a chance to just like really take in uh, the accomplishment that we, you know, we won. Um, and then having to be put back into a role in Poland, being a starting point guard again and having to play a lot of minutes, um, leading a team that, you know, I've players that, you know, I've never, never met before. Um, I did have my teammate Mercedes Russell with me when uh, in Seattle. She was my teammate in Poland, but um, it was just a lot of back and forth and a lot of balancing. And, you know, like I said, it's growing pain. Like, you know, some, some days are good, some days are bad. And you're going to go through those things early on in your career. But I think to have the success of winning my first year, I understood what it took to win a championship, um, the details that really matter. And then knowing that and how I can improve as a, as a player, um, going overseas was something that I really needed to do in order to get better and to grow my game. Um, Cause it's a different game overseas, um, different style of play. And so I think that really helped me and uh, coming into my second year, when Sue was out and having to step up and lead, um, I think that really did help my um, improvement as a player. So, yeah, it was just kind of like a whirlwind, you know, just trying to reflect on winning, but at the same time being like, okay, I have to move on to the next thing and make sure that I'm, I'm doing my job overseas. Um, so it was, yeah, it was a whirlwind for sure. Now, I, wanna, I think this is a perfect transition to our next question. because I want to talk about some, some community off the court things, but I want to ask one more question before we get to that. I think that puts things into perspective on how busy you were, right? Like just how like, you were moving, moving. If, if, if it wasn't the WNBA season, it was the season overseas. If it wasn't the season overseas, it was WNBA. Like, you were moving back to back. And even in 2020, like 
you come you another championship and I, I know it's the pandemic ring but that to me i don't i don't do pandemic at like i think you win a win is a win no matter what's going on i feel like it's even harder to do that kind of stuff in the pandemic um but 2020 another win i think i think about this quote all the time since i heard it but they say um people like you know about being great and it's like people aren't necessarily scared to be great they're only scared to be great because they have to be great again and i think so early on in your career you know winning your first your first two out of three seasons going to the championship winning playing key roles and growing within that it what i think it can cause people to hold you to a really high caliber but on top of that you know you probably holding yourself to that same way because now going ahead in your seasons in your career if i just won two out of three I, I got to keep showing people that, that when I when I come around, when I'm with a team, I add value, I'm bringing championships, I'm getting us further. Like, it's a lot to kind of take on. So, you know, you go from Seattle to back to L.A., two years there. Then this February, you join Atlanta Dream. And you're also well-traveled internationally. You're talking about going to Poland and playing. So I would love to just kind of know, how do you take those early learnings into your career as you find um, your new place um, not new place, but you just find that new levels of growth and that new areas of where you contribute and make an impact to get back to that championship level for different franchises and different teams. Yeah, I mean, having that success early on in my career, like I said before, like I understood what it took to win a championship. Um, the extra work you have to put in, not just um, on the court, but like how you recover, um, how you take care of your body, those little things matter. Um, and you know, just learning that on from watching Joel, from watching Brianna Stewart, watching Sue Bird, and, you know, my other teammates, Alicia Clark, just how they took care of their bodies and how they put in the work. Um, it just motivated me to want to be better um, and, and wanting me to be where they're at in their career. And then um, taking it elsewhere. I mean, obviously, now that I'm seven years in, I've, I've learned a lot from each team. And I think now is my time to be more of a leader. And now that I consider myself, I mean, technically, I am a vet now, which is crazy how time flies. But um, just taking my my leadership and my experience of what I learned um, on those championship teams, and, you know, trying to help my teammates now who are, um, you know, eager to win one, and I'm eager to win one. And when you when you win early on in your career like that, I mean, obviously you want to keep on winning. Um, so that's just like a goal every year is to win a championship. But what are the little things in between that's going to get you there? And since I've had that success early on in my career, understanding what it takes, just trying to help my teammates and, and you know, even help myself in a leadership role. Um, I'm not someone that in the past has been very vocal in my leadership, but being on teams, like Seattle and going into LA, like having to use my voice and being a point guard, you know, that is, you know, one of the main things that I, as a point guard, you have to have is, is the communication and the leadership role. So that's something that I have been trying to improve on uh, throughout my career because I'm very quiet. I'm very reserved. And so I know that in order for us to be successful as a team, like it has to start with me. Um, so that's some of the things that I have taken with me throughout my career is how I can get better, but also how I can help my teammates um, get to where they want to be as well. I love that. I think that actually, again, just segues into the next piece. You mentioned, you mentioned, you mentioned communication, you mentioned leadership. And the last thing you just said was that it started with me. I think that's like a perfect way to kind of talk about um, the work that you do off the court. And like making sure you give back and things like that, because it takes all three of those things to really like make that happen. With us, with this being Community Voices, we'll be also donating to the Ronald McDonald Foundation of LA. Um, their mission: providing essential services that remove barriers, strengthen families, and promote healing with children who need health care. Um, just you know, just the betterment of the whole round, the well-rounded family and family needs. Um, we talked about those. I just mentioned those three things. What does it feel like to? be blessed into this position to where like, you know, you're able to not just do what you love and have an impact and have all these uh special moments, but being able to give it back, being able to, uh you know, have community impact and not to have community impact in general, but be able to have it for, for, for you know, where you're from, the place that kind of made you and raised you. What does it feel like to be able to impact communities? And what are some like dreams that you have on that community aspect that you would like to accomplish one day? Man, it's a blessing. You know, not a lot of people are fortunate enough to be in the position that I am to give back uh, to the community. 
And I think it's really important for me to be in this position that I'm in that, you know, I, I have to get back. It's, it's something that is um, instilled in me um, and community is like a really big thing for me. And I think about this Nipsey Hussle quote, I'm a Nipsey Hussle girl. I love him. Um, Same. His, one of my favorite quotes uh, from him is the highest human act is to inspire. And so I think about that all the time in, in community and working with Ronald McDonald House in L.A. Um, and just wanting to give these these families and these kids um, resources and opportunities that, you know, they necessarily don't have on a on a day to day basis. And um, I wanted to take a different route. I mean, normally we, we think about, you know, kids who who are fortunate enough to go outside and play and, and go places and and um, hang out with friends and family and I think it's important to think about you know kids who are not in those positions who are facing real life um, battles and I think they deserve love too you know and that's something that I really thought about I was a McDonald's All-American in uh, 2014 and I got to go to Ronald McDonald House in Chicago and you know just in time with those kids and, and the families and just to see, you know, just the smiles on their faces, just for having an interaction with them for only 30 minutes. So I thought about that and I said, you know what, I really want to do that. I, I really want to be able to help these kids um, in any way, put smiles on their faces, whether it's, you know, giving them clothes or giving them toys or just spending quality time with them and just, you know, letting them know that, you know, they, they matter too. And so that's something that I really truly, uh, true to my heart with working with Ronald McDonald. They have been very, very uh, exceptional in our partnership and just want to continue to grow that. And I think and overall, not just Ronald McDonald, but I really love kids. I love the youth. I, I want to give back because, you know, the next generation is, is, is coming up and you want to be able to help them and, and make the world a better place. And so that's something that um, is really important to me. I love that. I think this is, and I think this is a perfect way to wrap things up. I think this is perfect. I also want to make sure I respect this. Is, we're still in season, so I want to make sure I respect that time too. Oh, oh you're fine. <laughs> Everything going on, but I think this this is like the perfect way to to go to the last question. Meetings. Um, I mentioned earlier how much energy, how much eyes are on the WNBA, and I, I'd be it'd be ignorant for me to say it's just this year because this has been I've. As, as a fan, I've been seeing it happen over the past four to five years, just seeing it snowball and pick up more support externally, the more eyes and brands investing and things like that. It's it's it's, it's beautiful to see. And also, I just feel like it's overdue, but it's so beautiful to see it finally happening. Um, but I think one thing I've noticed, too, is that you start to see a lot of these young athletes um, with their own like mixtapes going crazy on the court, uh, women basketball players going crazy on the court, breaking break it ankles, being pure point guards so early on, even do, even like performing and being amazing in sports like football, like just seeing women just really embrace like, hey, like, I don't care what this sport is known as, I'm about to go out there and be great. And I think we're starting to see those players come to come to the league now and seeing some of those people come in and things like that. And so I would love to just know, knowing this energy, this new beautiful energy that's on the WNBA and knowing that now even more players want to take your spot or they want to, you know, be next to you. They want to be the next you. They want to be better. Like that kind of energy coming into the league. What would you kind of say uh, for like the players who want to be you, who want to like get into the league and, and make it happen? Because I don't, I think as those eyes come on, we're learning more about what it's like to be a WNBA player and, and the different levels of camaraderie and the back and forth and things like that. So what would you say to somebody who is like watching you play, watching the league and wants to be in the WNBA and has those hopes? Yeah. I mean, the biggest advice that I can give is to be yourself, be authentically mm -hmm. you um, in every aspect. Uh, I feel like that's going to get you very far. And then just in terms of basketball, like you just got to want it you got to want it more. You got to do all the little things um, to get you here. Because once you get here, it's, you know, that's just the first step. It's, it's about, it's about staying here. How can you stay here? What are the little things that you can do to set yourself apart to make sure that you stay on the team? Because now that the league is growing and, you know, the talent is getting better, um, you know, it's, it's hard to stay in this league. And so, like I said, you have to set yourself apart. What are the little things that you can do? Um, 
that's, you know, the intangible things, you know, and uh, I would just say you, you just got to want it. You just, you just got to want it. And then not even also basketball, but I think now that we have so many eyes on us as well. And like I said before, your value comes from who uh, you are and not from what you do. I think that basketball is just, you know, one part of your life. Like now you're starting to see all these other athletes and um, investing in other things that they're passionate about that, you know, necessarily way back when you, you didn't really think about those things. All you thought about was basketball and, and take and having basketball take you to wherever you want to go um, after that. And I think it's really cool to see players in the league who are um, investing in themselves other than basketball. They're finding new avenues and, and different passions um, that people can see. And I think that's really important. I think that's also how that helps us grow our game and that people really want to tune in to not just the player, but the person that you are. So I think you just have to be authentically you, find other passions other than basketball. And, you know, it, obviously as a career in basketball, you just got to really find a way, find the intangibles to, you know, stay in the league. I'm not even going to say nothing on top of that. That's a perfect <laughs> way. A perfect way. No, no, I need to hear any more from me after that. Thank you so much for joining of us. Of course. For, for just sharing your time. Thank um, you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, thank you for everybody for tuning in to an episode of Community Voices. And until next time, take care.